Sundance. Okay, that doesn't work as well as Bond, James Bond. But, does anybody know the other gun carried by the character James Bond, other than the PPK? In, uh, after Ian Fleming died, James Garner was, uh, or excuse me, John Garner, was uh, given the rights to write the next novels in the James Bond series, and he wrote one called Roll of Honor in 1984. <clears throat> and when he did, he issued to James Bond uh, from Q Branch the Smith & Wesson Asp. There was one week in late spring when he found some pleasure with the Q Branch armorer Major Boothroyd and his delectable assistant Cute testing a handgun that the service was toying with using on a regular basis the ASP 9mm, an American-made combat modification of the 9mm Smith & Wesson. Bond found it one of the most satisfying handguns he had ever used. And I happened to be lucky enough to have in my hands a mint sample of the ever elusive, very difficult to get your hands on these, uh, Smith & Wesson ASP. This gun started as a Smith & Wesson uh, Model 39 conventional double action single stack 9mm uh, beautiful gun, blued steel uh, from Smith & Wesson. It was then modified, the original prototype, by a gun uh, leather maker and gunsmith and designer by the name of Paris Theodore in 1964. With the design approved, it was sent off to Armament Systems and Procedures, Inc., who uh, then produced the pistol uh, in manufacture. And yes, that's the same ASP Corporation that now makes the collapsible batons, and you'll see that later in the video. Uh, and that's what this gun uh, was later named, was the ASP, the acronym for Armament Systems and Procedures. This particular sample was uh, purchased new in 1982, 81, excuse me. Um, and as you can see, and as you're going to see in this video, uh, this is a very clean, very thorough, very complete uh, sample gun with all of the available uh, factory options in terms of leather uh, and all of the paperwork, catalogs, and articles that have referenced this, this gun. This is a great, great gun. Yes, we're going to shoot it. You'll see a little bit of video shooting the gun sparingly. Uh, but I'm going to go tabletop and show you some of the really neat details on this pistol. Hey guys, this is a pristine new in the box Smith & Wesson Model 39 single stack 9mm in traditional double action mode and three factory magazines. As pretty as this gun is, it sold well, it was serviceable for law enforcement and shooters alike, but as nice as this was, this was only the platform for a very, very special project. In 1964, the Smith & Wesson 39 was subjected some, to some extensive modifications, producing what is now known, and you see here, as the ASP, which stands for Armament Systems and Procedures. This modified concealed carry handgun was designed by Paris Theodore of Seven Trees Limited, a custom leather and gun manufacturer in 1964, and later sent on to full production at Armament Systems and Procedures. You can see the extensive modifications that were done to the Model 39. This sample pistol was purchased in 1981, uh, and when it was purchased, um, and, and the current owner, incidentally, of this pistol has uh, all of the original paperwork, sales receipts, letters to the company, and interestingly, copies of these two articles uh, that came from uh, the manufacturer with the order for the ASP, Law Enforcement Communications Magazine article on the ASP, and American Handgunners article on the ASP. <clears throat> these are both from 1979. These are great articles that can tell you the entire history of this unique pistol. It appeared in uh, Guns Magazine, made in the cover in 2000. Probably of most interesting note is its appearance in um, the novel, uh, James Bond novel, Roll of Honor. Another great article uh, in Combat Handgun Magazine, 1986. The birth of the Pocket 9. You know, here we are in 2012 now, and with concealed carry uh, 
taking over the country and most states reciprocating with others on allowing folks to defend themselves. The pocket nine has become very, very popular uh, for the law-abiding uh, citizen to carry you know, with the appropriate permit. Arguably, the birth of the pocket nine is the ASP. Another interesting piece, when you order the ASP, or at least back in then when you could order the ASP, you got this great little uh, catalog that takes you through all of the available options. Uh, ammo, cases, uh, holsters, handcuffs. Oh, and look, page 17 of the ASP catalog of advanced systems and procedures. Lo and behold, what do we have here? The concealable operations baton. So all of you folks that have been wondering about that ASP baton, yes indeed folks, it is the one and the same company as the ASP pistol from 1964. What a great little catalog. Notice the logo up there, the heartbeat, the heartbeat, and the flat line. <laughs> what, a, what a great logo. In this catalog there are some great, great uh, parts that you can buy, accessories that you can buy for your ASP pistol, or you could. And amongst those, again, I am lucky uh, that the owner of this particular ASP at the time that he ordered the pistol was able to acquire Ta -da, all of these wonderful factory original uh, directly um, from ASP uh, great leather products. You've got an outside the waistband leather holster, an inside the waistband uh, leather holster. Again you can see form fitted to the contours of the ASP pistol an inside the waistband uh, or out, depending on how you wanted to wear that, um, double magazine pouch, a shoulder rig, again molded to the contour or hand boned to the contour of the special lines of the ASP pistol, and an outside the waistband double mag uh, carrier here, and then finally the um, uh, logoed uh, gun rug, all factory original, all mint condition, a great, great uh, part of this collection uh, for this wonderful, wonderful pistol. Hey guys, tabletop on the Smith & Wesson uh, Modified 39 into the ASP limited edition pistol uh, for government contract and ultimately available for civilian purchase. Um, some of the obvious things you'll note in comparison to the factory model 39 pistol uh, is that it has been shortened both in barrel and uh, slide and frame uh, and in the bottom part of the frame so it's a smaller more compact pistol it's also had some weight reduction done in terms of uh, removing what would normally be the uh, grasping grooves on a slide right here has actually just been beveled out into a smooth contour on both sides it also has on the front that same bevel or removal of metal in what's commonly referred to as the high power uh, cut uh, on the front here. <clears throat> You'll also notice there is no front sight. I'll talk about this uh, unique sight on the rear. And just in vogue at the time uh, when the gun was manufactured was the concept of using the offhand uh, finger to wrap around the front of that trigger guard. And it was the idea of isometrics, counter pressure. If there's pressure coming from the shooting hand as you pull the trigger, pulling the gun slightly to the right, the theory was at the time putting the finger on the front of the trigger guard would balance that out uh, and improved accuracy. This design was seen on a number of pistols produced in roughly that same time frame. You don't see it so much uh, anymore, or at least that shooting technique used a whole lot anymore, but you do see the design live on even in such things as the Glock today. Although the magazine itself holds the same number of rounds, the gun itself was shortened. The magazines have been skeletonized. You can see the witness holes for the cartridges uh, have been done away with in exchange for one large open window uh, for you to see the cartridges. And then of course the grips have been replaced with a clear Lexan window here so that with the cartridges in the magazine and the magazine in the gun, the, the shooter can actually see through the grips, through this witness window, the witness window of the magazine itself, and actually see and count the number of rounds available. This is a very unique sight system called a gutter snipe system. 
The concept here, there is no front sight. The concept here is that the triangles uh, it forms three triangles as you can see. One on the left, one on the right, and one on the bottom. When those triangles are all the same size, it means that you've got the gun aligned squarely on target. Uh, where the points of those three triangles meet uh, is where you would want to uh, aim the gun. For uh, quick target acquisition in a combat scenario, I think it's, it's a unique system uh, that works well. It's unconventional enough, however, that it really wasn't a system that caught on after the ASP pistol uh, left production. <clears throat> so, here we go. Um, the tabletop on this is uh, a joy for me to have an opportunity to tell you about just because there's so few of these uh, on the market uh, and certainly so few of them in this condition and probably none of them in the condition this gun is with all of the factory original accessories and paperwork uh, that the owner of this uh, pistol happens to You can have. see here that the standard width of the Smith & Wesson Model 39 trigger guard is reduced and relieved on the right side, right here, that little contour right there. What that does is that from a speed uh, and trigger acquisition standpoint, when the agent grabs this pistol and brings the finger into the trigger guard, he can slip right past the front of that trigger guard very easily because it's been contoured out uh, to make room for that trigger finger. Uh, Interestingly, ASP had the forethought that these guns were actually manufactured with both left and right hand uh, designs. So for the left handed shooter, not only could they move the safety mechanism to the other side of the pistol, but they would actually then flip around and take the contour out of this side of the trigger guard instead of the right, it would be on the left, thus providing the left hand shooter with the same accessible or accessibility rather to that trigger. I just want to show you exactly how compact the ASP was. You can see nothing sticks out the bottom of my hand. You can see how short it is in my hand and how it actually sets a little lower in my hand than a traditional Smith & Wesson would. And you can see with that trigger guard modification, the trigger is actually sitting out further to the right, uh, available for my trigger finger to engage than the trigger guard itself is. I drop that down in there. Now, as short as it is in my hand, you'll notice that well, the problem you have in some of those compact nines today is you're always left with that little pinky kind of floating out there and nothing to put it on. Not only is the gun itself just long enough to catch that pinky, but of course they made the little bump stop on the magazine, which helps you seat the magazine solidly in the gun. Also gives you that last little bit of, uh, of uh, real estate there to get that finger on there. Nice little compact, very ergonomic. This is a gun, frankly, that was state of the, not only state of the art at the time, but well ahead of its time in terms of its design concepts. The very first, truly, uh, pocket knife.